everyone welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Catherine and I purchased a haunted doll <laughs> all right so I know this video is long overdue and the reason why it took so long to put this video together is because well some things were delayed and then also I was trying to gather evidence for you guys so I ended up getting my doll on February 23rd and I'm recording this video in March and I didn't get my EMF readers because I, I bought two EMF readers. I didn't get them until sometime like March 3rd, I believe, and then a little bit later uh, after that. And so since then I've been trying to gather some evidence because I didn't want to just come out on this video and say, oh, my doll's haunted without actually showing you guys some evidence first. And the reason why I got two EMF readers is because I didn't know which one would work best. So I just got two and they're both different. The first EMF reader that I'm going to show you guys is the one that you're probably more familiar with. You see a lot of ghost hunters use on different web, you know, episodes. If you watch them on TV or if you ever been ghost hunting yourself. Also, if you play phasmophobia like I do, <laughs> You're probably familiar with this one too. It is the K2 meter. So I bought this one because first off, I'm familiar with it from, you know, ghost hunters using it and playing it on Phasmophobia. But the only thing with this is it does not make noise, okay? So in Phasmophobia, uh, each time it would, you know, light up, it would make a noise. Well, a real life K2 meter is quiet. There's no noises. This is a real K2 meter. There's some um, fake ones out there that you guys should be careful of if you are interested in buying your own K2 meter. Usually K2 meters are, you know, over $50. Any K2 meter that's less than, like K2 meter, what I mean by K2 meter is this, not a smart sensor, but a K2 meter. <laughs> Um, they're, if they're like $20, most likely it's fake. I also got this from Ghost Hunters Equipment. Okay. And they gave me a little percentage off my next purchase, my next order from them. But they also gave me their business card. So I'll put, I'll put the information down below of all the different, um, EMF sent, EMF meters that I use during this video so that, you know, if y'all are interested in getting your own ghost hunting equipment, you can check them out. Um, but they gave me some instructions as well as what to be careful of if ordering a K2 meter specifically, like the ones with the white background are the counterfeit version of a K2 meter. So that was, that was pretty cool. Um, but what else came with this k2 meter is this handy dandy tool here so if i'm ever ghost hunting at night time and my batteries die because you know ghosts will drain your batteries <laughs> you could always use this handy dandy um, tool that they gave me it has a little flashlight but what's really cool is it has the little things that i can use to unscrew my k2 meter i just you know grab the, grab one of them and then I can just there's like a little it's a magnet and I can just put it inside the hole and while I'm unscrewing the back of my k2 meter I can change the batteries real quick in the dark so this you know really came with handy really came with handy this really came in handy <laughs> so that just in case I you know decide to go ghost hunting in the dark and both of these items together were around like $57, $55, something like that was how much I paid for both of these off of Amazon. And then the next uh, EMF meter that I got is a smart sensor. So this one is pretty cool because it detects the electromagnetic field as well. It detects, maybe I shouldn't have it facing me. <laughs> it detects electromagnet, 
magnetic field as well as taking the temperature. So it will take the temperature in Celsius or in Fahrenheit, whichever you prefer. What's really cool is it lights up when it does detect something and it also makes that noise that you heard earlier. Unlike the K2 meter, it doesn't make any noise, but it lights up and it will tell you how many bars and stuff. See, it lights up three <laughs> for me, all right? So I, I'm gonna turn this thing off because it's detecting a whole bunch of stuff going on over here. I got my computer on and, <laughs> and all sorts of stuff. And you can test it out around your house. You can put it up to the microwave. The microwave is the number one hot spot. <laughs> you can really see, you know, it light up and use all the bars on, on your K2 meter versus your computer. So I tested it out to make sure both of them work before I used it on my doll. I'll show you guys that evidence once, once we get to it. <laughs> And then at the very end of this video, I'm going to come to my, I'm going to have a conclusion of what I think about this doll and my thoughts and everything. But first and foremost, if you are wanting to purchase a haunted doll yourself or a haunted item, please be careful. You'd never know what people's intentions are. They could say that the spirit, the spirit attached to a doll is good, but you end up getting it and it's not so good. It could be a very evil spirit. So proceed with caution, okay? So how did this all come about? Where did I find this doll? All right, so I got this doll off of Etsy. Okay, so I was just looking around. I, I was looking for more creepy mystery boxes um, instead of, you know, going off of, instead of going off of Crate Joy, um, I went off of Etsy because I wanted to see if any shops had their own type of haunted mystery boxes, that kind of thing. And I came stumbling across haunted doll mystery boxes and I thought, oh, that would be really cool. And so I came to this store called Mystic Treasure Finds where she sells a bunch of different haunted dolls and then she also has her own mystery box. And so what I did is I went and, you know, I read the description, of course. It was only $40 for this haunted uh, mystery box, but there's also shipping. The shipping was around like $10, 10 to $11 to ship. So the total price I paid was a little over $50 for this doll. For the haunted doll, it says haunted doll active paranormal spirit surprise mystery box with spelled item uh, active ghost personal. And I thought, okay. And I'm like, what is this all about? So I click on it and I read the description and it says, here we have something very special to offer you. My sisters and I will hand pick a spirit doll just for you. We will also include a special and unique spelled item that we choose just for you. You will absolutely adore what we have in store for you. The spirit will be a positive one unless you request otherwise. Many blessings, love and light. So I was like, okay, cool. And I was like reading, I was reading all the reviews and a lot of people gave five star reviews with their own personal experiences with their mystery box that they got and the dolls that they received in these mystery boxes. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, it doesn't seem like she's out to get anybody. So I'm gonna go ahead and purchase a doll. So I bought it. I added it to my cart. I made the purchase and then now it's just the waiting game to receive my doll. Well, once I made the purchase, that's when my anxiety flared up, okay? Even though I saw a bunch of positive reviews, I was still a little nervous, or should I say anxious, because it's not just me in this house. It's not just me in this house. I have a cat and I have a husband. So my husband, <laughs> you're probably thinking, man, your husband probably thinks you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and he was telling me, you better not bring something, you know, evil into this house, you know, and I, that, you know, that really did, that's whenever I started to get a little worried because I don't want to bring something in that I don't really know, you know, 
because you don't really know what people's intentions are. I don't know what this owner looks like. You know, I don't know. I don't know her personally. So I was kind of nervous, you know, bringing this into my house. It's not like any other mystery box where it's not haunted. Like those, like my mystery boxes in the past haven't been haunted. Okay. But this, I'm bringing in something that is unknown and something that I cannot you know, physically fight. <laughs> so, so it was just, you know, I, I felt kind of, I felt really nervous. Well, as time goes by, I'm hoping that my EMF readers get here before she does, but that the exact opposite happened. I got my doll on February 23rd and my EMF readers didn't come in until March. Okay. So I had to wait to get my EMF readers. And I wanted, you know, to get the EMF readers first and then the doll so that I can just start recording evidence for you guys and get this video out there and posted so that you guys can see it. I don't wanna just make a video without getting EMF readers and just say, hey, this doll's haunted if it's not really haunted or, or you know, or I don't have any evidence to show you guys as proof if it is haunted or not. So I, you know, I wanted to gather or try and gather evidence for you guys. Well, when the doll arrives, I noticed that the box is kind of squished. And so I was worried that she might be damaged. So I went ahead and I opened her. I opened her up and she was wrapped and bubble wrap and she was fine. There was no breaks or anything, which is good. And there was a little note wrapped um, around in front of her. And so I undid the bubble wrap and I opened up the note and this is what it looks like. And it has a little, you know, it has her story about the doll. And so like they said, now this is where it gets kind of freaky. Like they said, they will choose they will handpick a spirit doll just for for you and then they'll also include a special and unique spelled item so i got both items the first one you know that i undid was the doll of course and i read her story now this is the part that gets kind of freaky okay because i swear the doll that they chose for me sounds like me which is super weird, okay? So let me, let me, I've never said anything about myself besides that I like coffee, okay? So if you think, oh, you know, the person probably looked you up on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's possible, um, but I'm not very big. I don't have a lot of subscribers like some of these YouTubers do. And on my Etsy, I don't think my name, um, it doesn't have Crazy Catherine listed. So it's not like, she could just, you know, look me up on YouTube or think to look me up on YouTube. But it, it's just kind of weird, you know. So I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna read this to you guys. So it says, meet Rosa. Rosa was an interesting woman when she had her human form. She traveled throughout the world selling paintings and studying magic. She never stayed in one place for too long as she wanted to see every part of the world. When Rosa was in her late 20s, she met a boy named Julian. Julian was curious about Rosa's lifestyle and decided to join her around the world. Julian began to fall for sweet Rosa and asked her to marry him. They were happily married with a baby on the way when Rosa got sick. Her body fell ill and her her and her baby passed away. Rosa is a gentle soul who cares strongly for the earth. She desires to be outside a lot and if she wants to go out, she will flicker the lights. She gives off powerful energy so you can be your best self. She is a free spirit who loves to make your day. She enjoys animals very much and the smell of coffee always gets her more active. If you feel connected to Rosa, then she is all yours. Many blessings, love, and light. So first off, I thought this was just too strange, okay? Because it sounds like things that I'm interested in as, interested in as well. 
So my first thing is traveling, okay? I would love, you know, after the pandemic and COVID, I wanna travel. I wanna, you know, go out and see the world, not just be in the state that I'm in, um, in the United States. <laughs> And so I want, you know, to explore, I want to do things and, and check out places and have fun. The next thing is, you know, she, she loves animals. Okay. And she's a free spirit. So am I, I love animals. I have a cat, but I would love to have a farm. Like <laughs> I would have a farm full of animals if I could. I love petting zoos. You know, I, I could spend all day in a petting zoo. So <laughs> And I just thought that was really strange. And then she um, she loves the smell of coffee. Well, I love to drink coffee. I drink more coffee than anything, than water. I don't really drink tea very much or tea at all, but I love coffee. So I just thought that this is weird that they decided to chew out of all the dolls that they have, they chose this doll for me. So that was the first weird sign. And let me tell you guys, when I got the box and I started opening it, I felt a lot of anxiety <laughs> because I was kind of scared because I didn't know if she was really a good spirit or not. Even though they said it would be a positive one, you never know what these people's intentions are. I don't even know what this lady looks like. You know, I, you never know. So I, I felt weird, you know, <laughs> but when I read this story, I was like, how that's strange. I didn't feel as anxious as I did when I first opened the box. I felt a little better, you know, because it sounded like she was interested, like this doll was, you know, her past life. She was interested in the same things I was interested in. And she dabbled in a little bit of like, you know, magic and stuff and I have magical tools and crystals and stuff and I like to dabble into the spiritual kind of side and, and see what's out there, the mysteries of the world, you know, trying to unlock the mysteries of the world. I don't know, <laughs> you know, that kind of side and, and stuff. So, you know, it's interesting. I just thought it was kind of crazy. All right. so the now the spelled item okay so i'm just i'm going to show you guys the spelled item then i'll show you guys what the what she looks like what rosa looks like but this is the spelled item that i got so it looks like this um figurine is from jesus it's it, it looks like one of the kings one of the kings it looks like it came from a activity scene and so for the spelled item, it came with a note as well. And it said, we offer to you this amazing and powerful spelled vessel. It has a spell placed upon it for finances. If you are in need of money and would like to increase your bank account, then this vessel is for you. It will give you much blessings of luck and money, many blessings, love and light, which is great. I think we all could use some more money <laughs> this time, you know, especially this time. Um, due to COVID and lots of small businesses closed, even big businesses are closing their doors. So, you know, really the spelled, I the spelled item could go for anyone would go good, you know, being sent to anyone, especially this time of year. So, you know, I thought that was really nice. This is what Rosa looks like. So I'm going to show you guys. So this is Rosa, all right? Her mouth actually has an opening, which I thought was kind of crazy. <laughs> and then she has a pretty red bow in her hair. This is her dress. She kind of looks like, like a Christmas kind of doll with this plaid sparkly gold bow. Um, I tried looking to see how old she is. I tried to look on the back of her neck, but I didn't find a date on her neck. Um, I tried looking like on her back side, um, but I, I didn't find anything. There's no tags anywhere. There's no tags in the dress or anything. So I don't really know how old she is. 
However, I didn't try like undressing her totally, you know, to see if there's a date somewhere, or if it's on her feet or something. Um, I'm just, I'm not a professional porcelain doll person, so I don't really know exactly where their dates would be. I'm gonna have to look more into that to see, you know, if I can find out how old she really is. But this is Rosa. That's what she looks like. So I have two EMF readers in my hand. The first one is the K2 EMF meter that you may be used to in seeing a lot of ghost hunters use during their investigations. Um, you also may be familiar with this one if you play the game Phasmophobia on Steam like I do. <laughs> the only thing is, um, they do not make a sound like you're used to hearing um, on Phasmophobia when they light up. They're actually silent. <laughs> so there's not a sound with this one. However, the smart sensor makes a sound and it also detects um, the temperature as well. So right now it's in Celsius, but you can change it to Fahrenheit, whatever you're used to. So I got two of them because I didn't know which one would work the best. And then I wanted to see, you know, what type of readings both of them would get if we were to get anything. So to demonstrate it, I'm going to use this on my PC just to show you guys how these work. So if I aim these, you can see the EMF, uh, the K2 meter has three lights going off. And then the smart sensor also is going off, but then you can hear the noise that it makes. Okay, so if something is detected, you'll, you guys will see it light up and then you also will get the sound. So what I'm gonna do is I have Rosa sitting on my chair away from the electronics, away from my desk, because I didn't want any interference when trying to see if she would respond. Um, but I, I wanted to use both of these sensors on her to see if maybe we can pick up anything. So let's see if she will respond. We'll see if she, if there's really a spirit in her. <laughs> All right, so first I am going to use the EMF, the K2 meter. And I'm just gonna, oh my goodness. Okay. Did y'all see that? It just flickered. Th oh, okay. Oh my goodness. It just flashed. Rosa, are you here? Can you make this EMF meter go off again? Can you do that again for me, please? I'm just scanning her head. <laughs> Can you make this go off again, please? Can you give me a sign? Okay, now she, it's just dead. Now I'm not seeing anything. And my hands are down here, so it's not gonna pick up my hands, my energy. So the sensor is at the top. So if I point it at me, you can see it's going off. But if I point it at her, oh, okay, maybe I need to hold it straight. Rosa, can you make the, can you make it light up for me, please? Oh. Okay. So 
So I'm just gonna lay this at her feet. All right, now I'm gonna use the smart sensor and I'm gonna see if it picks up anything. Right now it's at a zero. So nothing is changing. Are you here, Rosa? I may leave this overnight to see if maybe we can catch something overnight but it may drain my batteries. <laughs> and and uh, EMF, I don't know if it picks up this thing, but so, so far nothing's really going on. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna leave these at her feet and I'm gonna see I'm gonna ask her some questions again to see if it will go off. Rosa, can you can you make the smart meter go off or the K2 EMF meter light up again for us? Give us a sign. Okay, so my plan is to leave this on overnight and we'll see if we catch anything. All right, so the first time I started recording the doll on my chair, I had a nightmare, okay? So I, you know, got it all set up. I put both the EMF readers at her feet and I, I put her on my chair and had um, my webcam on my computer record, you know, the whole thing. Well, I went to bed, okay, and I had this dream that kind of freaked me out. <laughs> okay, so basically it was this room that you guys see right now. I was in, um, it was like me watching my video um, of me recording the doll. So, you know, after after you record something that, you know, a haunted area, you always go back and review the footage. Well, in my dream, I was reviewing the footage and I have a closet in the back corner here. Now, I don't really have a closet in the back corner of this room, but for some reason in my dream, I had a closet that was in this back corner and the door was open, okay? And inside my closet was a Freddy Krueger doll. Now, I do not have a Freddy Krueger doll. I wish I did, that would be awesome. <laughs> but I don't have a Freddy Krueger doll. Um, but what was strange about this dream is nothing was happening with my EMF readers, okay? So the doll was just sitting in the chair with both EMF readers, they weren't going off, nothing was going on. But in the back closet, that Freddy Krueger doll that was sitting on the top shelf in my closet, all of a sudden he's sitting there like this. I'm gonna just show you guys. He's sitting there like this and his face is this way. And then as time go, runs through the video, all of a sudden his head slowly moves and it stops and it's looking straight at the webcam. Okay. So that's the first thing that happened. And then all of a sudden my dream changes. My dream changes to me in a hotel lobby with a bunch of other YouTubers and we're about to go and investigate this haunted room that's on the sixth floor of the hotel. So I'm super excited because I've never ghost hunted before. And so this would be my first go, my first actual ghost hunt with actual equipment and with a bunch of, you know, a group of fun people. So I'm like super psyched. Well, we get into the elevator and we push the sixth floor 
And in my dreams, elevators never work properly. Like they, they don't just go up and down. And it's not like Willy Wonka, okay? The, my, my elevators and my dreams are always wonky, okay? So we get into this elevator and if you've ever been in one of those elevators that are very rickety and shaky, that's this type of elevator. It's a very cheap, rickety, kind of shaky elevator. And so I got into the elevator and you know the floor kind of moved a little bit and we pushed the sixth floor and as we were going up the elevator all of a sudden before it reaches the sixth floor it goes back down and we're like why is it going down it's not supposed to go down you know we need to get to the sixth floor and so as it goes down then all of a sudden it starts to tilt forward and we kind of you know fall forward to the door and we're freaking out because it's now it's starting to rise but it's on it it's tilted and it starts to go to the sixth floor but it's not like we can get out because if the door opens we'd fall to our death basically you know so it it's at a tilt and it starts to go up and then all of a sudden i'm i'm woken up by my husband shaking me because he couldn't tell like my breathing was erratic so he woke me up from my from my nightmare and then I just felt really creeped out. <laughs> I felt creeped out. So I came out of the bedroom and I just stopped the actual video recording for the first night. And then I went back and I checked it and it did not catch anything. And, you know, I, I listened to the video the first night and there was nothing. There was no noises. It didn't catch anything on the EMFs, nothing. So I just thought it was just a really strange occurrence you know it could have just been me like overthinking that you know what if I catch something and it's really freaky you know how do I deal with it maybe that's why I had this kind of dream kind of thing or maybe it was the doll no, no. <laughs> and so I decided okay you know let's let's do this again but instead of stopping it so early because normally ghosts tend to come out at three o'clock around three so the next time around, I recorded all through the night. I recorded for like six or seven hours. And the only thing that I picked up on, um, as you guys uh, could hear, is clicking. I don't know if the clicking, you know, was due to my computer. It could have been my computer clicking. Um, it could have been the house shifting. Who knows? But I, I don't really, I don't really think it's paranormal. I didn't catch any voices or anything like that. My cat didn't walk around, which I'm surprised, you know, she was probably just sleeping. So I didn't, you know, so far I have not caught anything. So based off of, you know, the evidence that I've recorded, which is none except for clicking, <laughs> but my different experiences, um, I have, I have not experienced any flashing lights. Um, whenever we we make coffee every morning i mean and nothing has happened there is no she 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 puts in here that you know um the smell of coffee always gets her more active well i make 
coffee every morning and nothing nothing occurs out of the out of the normal so to me you never know what you're gonna get I risk you know I risk making this purchase either the doll of you know either not getting anything not getting any type of activity or getting activity or and it's positive or getting activity and it being a demon <laughs> So I really risk purchasing this doll, which I knew the risk, okay? I understood the risk and I was fine. You know, I, I got my purchase. She's a cute doll, so I'm gonna keep her. But so far, do I think she's haunted? No. It's been several days since the 23rd. It's almost been a month. And I know some people will say, oh, but it takes time for your ghost to really, you know, acclimate itself to its new house, you know, and get to know you and your husband and your cat and stuff like that. And I understood that. So I thought, well, maybe, you know, I should do another video, another recording to see if I would pick up anything later on. And I didn't pick up anything. So I don't really think she is haunted. And to tell you guys the truth, I'm relieved. <laughs> Because I don't know if I really wanted to bring something, regardless if it's positive or negative, into our house, um, spirit-wise. So I'm kind of glad that, you know, we didn't get anything. Because <laughs> that was probably, you know, one of my anxieties is that it would be something negative. But anyways, well, let me know what you guys think, if I should wait and, and see if we would pick up anything later on, I'll let you guys know if I do start getting more activity because it's only been like a little less than a month, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye you guys.